Hi, my name is Ralphie, and this is my wife, Carmelina. We're in our house, and this is Ralphie 101. So what's Ralphie 101? 10 things that you should know about me. I am Racer X. Racer X is a name that came from the Vive article written in 1998 by Ken Lee. People started telling them stories and they kept mentioning my name. They kept saying, the guy you need to talk to is Ralphie. The guy you need to talk to is Ralphie. So he's like, where's Ralphie? He never, he can never find me. And a friend of mine, Javier Ortega, brought him over and introduced us. He explained what he wanted to do. And then I, after a while, I agreed. Racer X was definitely not my nickname. It was something that Ken Lee came up for the name of the story. I know he had a few others. I can't remember them right now, but he had a few others. and. Um, he picked Racer X because oh, it was a cartoon. The name of the main guy was Racer X. He had a helmet, a race car, like an old Ford GT40. So that's how he came up with that name. And uh, he found it interesting and we both agreed. Um, we both agreed on, on the name and that way there's no names being put out there in the actual... Kind of like a play on words. Yeah. Like Malcolm X kind of type thing where Correct. you you know, it's the person is doesn't have an, a name because yeah. this is underground and no one wants to be named in these things because, you know, it's illegal. I am not Dominic Toretto. Most people ask that question because the Fast and the Furious is based on the article. So they right away assume that I am the main character. Like I always say, I don't I don't look like him. I'm better looking than him, right? Yes, <laughs> way better looking. So, uh, <laughs> now I do, I got no hair now. <laughs> so, um, how could I say? They always try to relay me to that. I just try to stay away from it. Um, he, he portrays, let's say, more of like a, not a street racer, but more of a, it, it, it changes during each episode of the film. Like at first he was just uh, a street racer. Then he was a, a, a car a robbery, doing robbery, a hoodlum. Um, so, and then he was a superstar. Then he's flying out of buildings. So all that stuff is, is uh, I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm related to it. Uh, and I think they drove away from the story that that it, that that the vibe magazine was a lot of people that knew us that knew that he had done the article which i mean he obviously was happy and proud of the article but when they found out that the article was being turned into a movie and then when you see the movie and it starts in a scene where they're committing actual an actual crime everybody's like oh is that what your husband does uh, no, this <laughs> is a hardworking <laughs> business owner. Like, no, that's not what he does. He doesn't fly out of windows either, people. He yeah. does not. I own a shop called DRT. DRT stands for Drag Racing Technologies. I own DRT since May 1997. It actually started with my partner, Javier Ortega, which he was with me for three years. And I stood there, so for the past 22 years, I manage to make a living out of what I love, which is racing. He's invested his whole life into this shop, right? Like, it's been lots of late nights, two, three o'clock in the morning, working on people's cars to make sure that they make it to their races on time. He worries about everything. He's very in his head all the time. It takes him away from home a lot, which I'm not happy about, but you know, you know, DRT has afforded us a good life and it's been a lot of work and it's been a labor of love, but we, you know, he's made it work and he's really good at what he does. And I'm, I'm just proud of him because he's a hard worker. <laughs> I have a race car and his name is Coche Bomba. That name has a, a story to it. The car was actually a customer's car, a friend of mine and I ended up getting the car as a shop car from that customer. He put the actual name on the car because he was at the track ones and uh, the car had a nitrous kit in it. And um, he accidentally pressed the nitrous before he started the car and that's, that's a no-no. <laughs> he didn't know that and he went ahead and started the car and when he started the car, the whole intake and hood and everything blew off the car. And he, he, you know, it ended up all over the place, pieces all over the place. Everybody was scared, like something something blew up, it sounded like a bomb. 
So that's how the name Cochabomba came out. The car grew up and that's what Cochabomba stands for in Spanish. Cochabomba is a 1987 Corolla GTS. The body's called AE86 now. I drive the car, which I enjoy a lot. It's my own world once I'm in there. It's like a lot of people must have heard Michael Jordan saying you're in the zone doing something. So that is my zone. When I'm there, I'm concentrated in there. I forget about anything that's going out, outside in the world, in the real world. Um, for those six seconds, I'm just transforming to somebody else. And I become maybe part of the car. So it's like we're, we're one, we're one, basically. The fastest I ever gone is 217 miles an hour. That's quite a story on its own because it took quite a while to get the car dialed in, many sleepless nights, a lot of frustration, um, but never giving up. It went seven seconds for almost two years. So it's like we were so close and the goal for the car was always to go six seconds. We actually went to Maryland in 2021. We always go to, to the MIR um, events. It's called Imports versus Domestic. We've been going there for years. And we try it there. To, it's, it's a good track to go to do your best ET or time in. And we came really, really close. We went 7 3 I mean, we were like 0 0.003 from going 699. So sat inside the car, very frustrated. Um, had the mile an hour to go six. So it was very frustrating, but like I said, it, it, it gives you, you get out of the car, you know, it's like when you fall, you clean yourself up and back to work. Everybody was thinking of going to Orlando. I said, okay, so we ran a 681 right out in the first pass. So I get out of the car and everybody's happy. Um, you know, we, 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 we hug each other at the end. Every, everybody's just going crazy. And um, I said, wait, we can go faster. They go, you sure? I said, yeah, I let go way before. If you look, there was a guy there recording a video. You see when I lift that the car throws flames through the exhaust, so that's where I live. And everybody saw it was at the thousand foot mark. So we're like, wow, okay, we get ready for the next pass. And I said, okay, I'm gonna take the limiter out. Every, the car's happy. We look at all the locks, look at everything in the car. I said, the car's happy, we should go. We didn't expect the guard to go as fast as it went. It went 656. So it's like, wow. We were all going crazy. We didn't even care for the event anymore. This was the goal. You know, this is the icing on the cake. It was a, a very, very, very um, proud moment for me. Just so you guys know, Ralphie does not race on the streets. He does not go fast. He drives at the speed limit. She drives fast. Very limit. frustrating. She, I'm she's... like, we need to get to where we need to get to. But apparently, we can only get fast on the track. I don't know. Yeah, she does drive faster than me. My first car was actually a 1972 Datsun 510. It was a beat up car. That was my testing ground. <laughs> That's, I started to fix it myself. I didn't have enough money to fix it. My mom actually paid for the car. I didn't even pay for it. <laughs> so um, I had to fix it myself, learn um, with friends, um, try and error, because you don't, you don't know what you're doing. You're just grabbing a wrench and loosening things and tightening things. But it was it was a way to learn, and um, I had it for for uh, maybe a year or two. It was it was a, a beat up car that we were trying to fix, and then you actually give up on and move on to the next one. Cars were very cheap at that time. You can buy a car for five hundred bucks, two hundred bucks in, in those days. Can't do that now. Can you imagine <laughs> two, three hundred, five hundred bucks for yeah. a car? Little sure. backstory: What he used to do with these cars were his mom used to buy him the cars. He would take out the motor, put put it in his bedroom on the floor on a tarp, and work on <laughs> that in his room. Can you imagine? On I would third floor. I, on a third floor walk up, walk up with his friends, 
take the motor into his room and tinker with it there, and then bring it back down, put it in the car, and then try to go fast. It was cold. In the winter, it was cold. So. <laughs> now, I drive a uh, rich line, a Honda rich line. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> pickup. <laughs> pickup. yeah I, I haven't had like a, a fast street car since probably 96, something like that. It's always been just a regular car to, to drive. Back in the day, I was never arrested for street racing. The laws were very lenient, so you will probably, I was stopped and get tickets for you. We used to get tickets, uh, which we never paid. <laughs> yeah, in those days, you don't pay tickets. You just let them, whatever, disappear. Um, until I became older and then tried to get a real license, <laughs> because I never had a license when I was street racing. So when I tried to get a license, I found out I had 52 suspensions. So I was like, how could I have 52 suspension when I don't have a license? And then they explained to me that your license is already suspended because you haven't paid 52 tickets that you have. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I actually, um, there was, it was, it was such a, a span of time that I said, well, uh, somebody told me, look, just, just fight the tickets. Don't pay them because some of them, the, the cop might not even come or might not even show up. So they get dismissed. But I did. It took me over a year to fight all those tickets. Tell them and, how old you were when you got your actual driver's license. Must have been 20 something, mm -hmm. right? 28, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I tried to get a license when I was like 15 or 16. I did try to get a license and then um I I I mean I thought I did pretty good in the in the in the in the test, the driving test. But uh as I'm finishing the test, there was a four-way street so two-way two-way no stop signs for anybody so there was no crosswalk in those days either it was just blank so i'm driving and it was it was one of the cars from the school so he had a brake on the other side so i'm driving there was the car stops so i'm like what happened the car stopped i freak out he goes no you were supposed to stop there i said what do you mean there's no stop sign he goes yeah there's no signs for anybody but it's a it's a, it's a four-way street. You're supposed to stop. I'm like, well, I didn't know. So then he said I made like a, a dangerous move and he failed me. So I was so upset. I was so upset about that. Uh, I, I still remember it to this day. That's like, how upset I am. How did you fail a race car driver? Well, right? I wasn't a race car driver. Well, then. you were racing I, cars No, already. no, no. At that time, I was 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was young. I was young. So, uh, but, but still. He failed me. I said, ah, I don't need a license. I never go back. And, and in those days, you know, we used to drive with no registration. Just take a play out of the car, put it on a car and drive. Oh and, and all you get was a ticket. All you get was a, it's a traffic violation. It's, it wasn't a crime. Nowadays it is. Now you get caught with no, with so no insurance don't and do it. you go to jail. Yeah, you can't do it now. So it was, you know, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have any money. We just, we took insurance. We didn't even know what that was. Insurance, we didn't know what that was. Registration, didn't matter. We just put a plate on the car. That was our registration, that was everything. And and then I usually just drove around the neighborhood anyway. I didn't go outside of the neighborhood. Uh, you know, cops didn't have computer. That's when it became a problem. When, when the cops, got their first computers. That's <laughs> it's their fault. That's, that's, well, <laughs> We're going to blame it on the computers Well, their it's not cars. their fault, <laughs> but now they can run the plate and know that the plate don't belong to the car, so you get pulled over. You get, that's, that's, how, that's how the law started to change. Don't try any of this at home, guys. Yeah. I've been in a lot of magazines. Most of you don't know what a magazine is, I guess, nowadays, all the millennials. Uh, but the older ones knew that's what we had as a form of information before. You know, so you're reading these magazines forever and it's like a dream to be in a magazine. So when when I started to actually race at the track, a guy um, came up to, to a car that I was racing and took pictures of it. They didn't think anything of it. Um, we were just racing. But then we saw, um, his, the guy's name was actually Sean Carson, very well-known guy in the, in the industry. And I actually met him there. We had we we spoke about. So he was looking at the manifold, the exhaust manifold, the header on the car. He's he was very interested in it because he said that's the first time he ever seen an equal left manifold. And um, we talked about it, and he took the pictures, and boom! In like three four months, 
when we picked up a Turbo magazine, we we see the pictures and he talking about it. Uh, very that that was a very like accomplishment to see to see a, a car that at least I was driving and, and, and I built to actually be in a magazine. And from there, things kept just moving along. I've been in Turbo Magazine, Super Street, Sports Compact, Motor Trend. Uh, those being the, the Sports Compact was like the high-end magazine of the import world. Um, and then, you know, uh, a few years, this, this all came in that same order also as Motor Trend being the top of the line and, and still is it's a digital magazine right now and um, they, they they did a, a story on, on, on me as well about everything the Vibe magazine and the Fast and the Furious and all that because they thought it was somebody else. In Turbo Magazine I was there a lot probably about seven times in, in Turbo Magazines. I also wrote uh, a story so they took that was, that was another moment where I sat down and meet my humble self, always thinking that I, I don't know anything. And they actually picked 10 people in the United States to write about a car. They gave everyone a car. They gave me the Toyota MR2 in, in those days, which I was doing a lot of at, at that time. And I wrote a, a I told the guy, I'm not a writer. <laughs> I will write it for you, and then you do all the grammar and make it make it look good. And, um, so he goes, yeah, just write it. I, I wrote it all. I sent it to him, and it was actually published. And it was they did the ten the ten best tuners in 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 the United States, which I didn't think I was one of them, but. For that car, yes. <laughs> so humble. And, um, okay. and yeah, so uh, I, I was I was very proud of that little article. It was about a quarter page. My racing idol is Ayrton Senna from Formula One. To me, I used to watch Formula One at the time and didn't know, to me, he was the superstar of. He was the Michael Jordan of Formula One in a Formula One race in France. He actually went into a race and lapped every single racer except the second place racer. And his team is saying to his radio, if you look at it in the, in the documentary, the team is sending him to the radio to, he's gonna win the race, stop, you know, save the car. And he's like, he just continue and continue and continue just to prove to people that he can do it, that he's that good. He was a, a, a big advocate on safety, and that's something that I always also think about before I get in the car. Like, I, I don't take safety for granted on anything. Um, and that comes from the racing days, all the dangerous things that I did, that now I look at and say, wow, um, that was dangerous, even though I, 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 you, think you, you think you can do it, and you think you got the skills, but you know, sometimes you don't even think about it. That's probably why he's my biggest idol. I think also because he was really in competition with himself. Yeah. You know, and and you're you're a lot like that. Right. You're, yes, you're racing against other racers, but you have to be in competition with yourself to make yourself better. So you're you're a lot yeah. like that. You're always in competition with yourself. You want to be your own your own records. You're never yeah. looking at somebody else's record. You're mostly looking at your your records. After racing. My second favorite hobby is mowing the lawn. Um, he, I actually found out just by doing it after I got the house. <laughs> and, and going through a lot of stress with the house and, <laughs> and everything, so. Um, Tell the people what you like. I know, a friend of mine gave me a, a lawnmower. Um, it's still a gasoline thing, so it, it, it makes he, it. He likes mowing the lawn. So, this yeah. is his hobby, people. This so is what I have to go through. When I mow the lawn, like, I'm in my, like, again, it feels like I'm in my world. Nobody's bothering me. I trim it. I get all of my equipment out. And it's, it's very relaxing. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but it's, it is. And if not, try it. Try it. And you're going to see. It's very relaxing. Um, it's a workout at the same time. It's, it's something that I don't do, so it, that's why it's a hobby. You know? And just so you guys know, he's taken this lawnmower apart <laughs> at least 15 times you gotta fix and it. put it back together. He refuses to buy a new one because he can fix it. <laughs>
Yeah, they're, they're expensive. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're expensive. For me, so, come yeah. on. I still have you the same. You just like fixing the. the yeah, I still got the same one for for. It feels what, like it's 16, a car. And... For 16, 17 years, I still got the same yep. one. Same old, same, same old. Same one. Same one. My friend gave me. <laughs> same one. One of my friend gave me, but it works. It works good. It works good. But um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a quiet time for me. It's a it's something like I said, something that I don't do, and that's why it's a hobby. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment below. Subscribe and share the channel. See you next time, Ralphie's Racing World. Bye guys. <laughs>